In this video, we're going to be taking a look at ROS services. Services are another option for connecting nodes in the ROS graph. While topics only allowed for one-way communication between nodes, ROS services implement a two-way communication structured as a call and response. This is sometimes referred to as a remote process call, or RPC. When using a service in ROS, we will have one node that is the server. This node will advertise the service. Our other node will be the client. This will be the node that calls the service. Services are analogous to a function in your program. They take in some input, do some processing on it, and return some output. Here, the server is the node that's actually doing the processing, and the client is the one that's providing the input and receiving the output. So whenever a service connection is made between a client and a server, the client will send a request message that includes all of the input, all of the arguments necessary to run the service. And when the service is done running, the server will send back a response message that includes all the output data being returned by the service. While topics were many-to-many -many and could have as many publishers and subscribers as we wanted, services are one-to-many. Only one node can be the server for a given service. And while you can have as many clients connecting to that server as you want, each client will only see the communication relevant to its own service call. So each response message only goes to the client that sent the corresponding request message. Now, just like topics have associated message types, services have associated service types. Each service type specifies the structure of the request message and the response message. Let's walk through an example using a service provided by the turtle sim node. To get started, open up a terminal and run the turtle sim node. And then in a new tab, let's see what services are available using the ROS service list command. And just like ROS topic list, here we see a list of all the services currently available in our ROS system. We're going to be looking at the spawn service today. So let's do ROS service info slash spawn. Here we can see which node is advertising that service. In this case, it's our turtle sim simulator. We can see the type associated with that service, turtle sim slash spawn, and it goes ahead and tells us the argument names for that type. If we want to see the full structure for this service type, we can use the command ROS serve show, and then the name of the service type, in this case, turtle sim slash spawn. And here we see the contents of the service file that defines this service. It's effectively two message files stacked on top of each other. The first half is the request message. This specifies all the arguments we have to give to the service in order for it to run. The second half, after the triple dash line, is the response message. And this defines the structure of the output that will be returned to us if we call this service. So now we know both the name and data type for each of the arguments we need to provide to this service. We can call this service from the command line using the ROS service call command. So let's type ROS service call. We give it the name of the service, slash spawn, and then we can use tab complete to generate the request message. Let's set the position of our turtle with X and Y, and I'll set two on each. We can leave the theta or the heading of our turtle at zero, and we can leave the name empty. When we press enter, the service will get called, a new turtle will be spawned, and the response message will be printed to the screen. Because we left the name empty, TurtleSim generated a new name for us automatically and returned it to us in the name argument of our response message. So now we know that our new little turtle is named turtle2. So that's how to call a ROS service from the command line. If you want to call a ROS service from your C++ or Python code, take a look at the service page on the ROS wiki to see how each language library exposes the service client functionality. That's all for this video. We've got an introduction to ROS service, our first alternative to connecting nodes in the ROS graph besides the topic. ROS services are great for exposing specific functions, like the spawn functionality we saw with TurtleSim. They're also useful for interacting with sensors or other data sources that work on a polling model instead of providing a continuous data stream.